the experiment to find the IV characteristic of a PN junction diode. I have already explained in my theory lecture what is a PN junction diode. See in my right hand you can very well see a PN junction diode. It's green in color. Now look at it. The tapering part which is here is the N side. Please don't call it negative. It is the N side of a diode whereas the flat portion here is the P side. So in theory of study what is a P type semiconductor? what is the n-type semiconductor. So they are manufactured in such a way that we get a PN junction diode. Now we have to perform an experiment. What are we going to do? We will be finding the characteristics. What is meant by characteristic? We have to see the relationship between current and voltage. Relationship between current and voltage. So current is dependent on biasing. So we need to bias a PN junction diode. Now what I do is, here, this is a crocodile pin and I am connecting this crocodile pin to the P side and this negative crocodile pin, negative meaning it is connected to the negative in a battery, this pin to the N side. We have you seen this? Look, look at it. So this is the way. Now let's see the connections. Fine. In this particular experiment, we are connecting the rheostat as a potential divider. So what we are doing, this is our battery eliminator. This is on 2 volts, the knob is on 2 volts. Positive of the battery, negative of the battery has to be connected to the two ends of this particular rheostat. So what I do, I take this and connect it to the positive connect it to this knob of the rheostat then the second one the negative I am connecting it to this key and from the key it goes to the other end of the rheostat so rheostat is connected to positive and negative positive and negative of the eliminator now this is the diode diode there are two wires coming out one wire one wire is going to this variable terminal, terminal number 3 and one wire is going to the milliampere, positive. So you can see here positive, uh, positive end of the voltmeter is coming to the P side and negative end of the voltmeter is coming to the N side, you can see. So we can find the potential difference across the two ends of the diode. Now comes the next part. This is to find out the potential difference, millivoltmeter. We have connected this as a potential divider arrangement. One thing you have to take care that the connections are tight. Insulations are not entering inside this so that we get perfect conduction. Now comes the remaining part of the connection. From this rheostat, one terminal of goes to the negative of the milliampere. Whenever you are measuring a current or connecting a milliampere or an emitter in the circuit, see that positive of the milliampere goes to positive of the battery eliminator or negative goes to negative. So from here through this key, in fact it is going to the negative. So again I will revise the connection part. This is my diode. One end goes to the variable end where we are going to feed it with positive voltages and the uh, other end that is the end side is going to milliampere. The remaining two wires from P and N are going to the millivoltmeter. You can see the millivoltmeter. So this is my millivoltmeter, this is my milliampere and this is the diode. These are the connections. Now we need to start with the experiment. Let me remind you the potential divider arrangement. I told you very well, when your position is here at A point, can you see this A point? Towards positive, the voltage drop across these is almost 2 volts. 2 volts means a higher voltage. But now we need to know that we have to decrease the voltage because we do not want higher voltages to the diode. 
it's on two volts and then I started in the readings. You know very well, least count of my millivolts meter is 20 millivolts, whereas the least count of the milliameter is 0.5 amperes. So we must try and get the emitter in such a way that his least count is very very small so that we can get better readings. So we start with the readings. So 20 millivolts, 100 millivolts 0, 200 millivolts 0, 300 millivolts 0, 400 millivolts 0, 420 millivolts, it is conducting to 0.5 milliamps. And then we have taken the readings once again for various uh, divisions, millivolts and let's see when it becomes when the current shoots current shoots after 660 millivolts the current shoots up can you see that on the emitter you can see that current shoots up full current so at 420 millivolts is the point at which the current starts rising it comes to half milliamp and after that, after 660 millivolts, the current shoots up and therefore we get the range of readings from 420 to 660. So now we will start drawing the graph. What is the meaning of that? Characteristics. Graph of current versus voltage. You can see here, this is the current and this is the voltage and we are drawing the graph. And we have got so many observations and you know very well on our voltmeter when it was 420 millivolts the current shown was 0.5 milliamps but it is does not mean that there won't be current before that voltage so we may get current at 400 also because that least count itself of that milliameter is 0.5 milliamps now we need to find out three things the first one static resistance the second one, dynamic resistance and the third, find the threshold voltage. So let's start with the first one. Now you can see in this graph, this is a graph where it does not show a directly proportional relation between current and voltage. So here in the beginning the current is zero, then slowly the current starts increasing, there is a curve like this and then current starts shooting up you get a sort of a linear graph. So this region is the linear region. So when you are finding the static resistance, you need to find the static resistance in the linear region. So let me choose one point here. I draw the line. So this is the line I draw. So here I get static resistance Rs is equal to this. Rs is equal to voltage upon current you need to find out at this point. Now, how to find dynamic? Dynamic resistance, you need to choose two points. We will choose one point here and say one point here and then choose the dynamic region. That means dynamic region also is taken in the linear region. Why do you think so? The main reason is Diode starts conducting properly in this region. It is called as diode is in the active mode. So all the devices which are using in your electronic circuits, wherever we are using a diode, they always conduct in the active zone. That is the linear region. And therefore, never ever find a static resistance in this region. Find a static resistance and dynamic resistance wherever you get a linear part of the graph. So this is about static. What about dynamic? Dynamic we have taken. First we have taken static and now we have taken dynamic. So you will get dynamic resistance is equal to dv upon di. So this is my dv and this is my di. So dv upon di is the dynamic resistance. Now the last part of the story is we need to find out threshold voltage. So you see one thing, 
this is 0.5 million and this is 1 million these are the lowest currents which we have seen for this voltages now what we have to do is we have to take a ruler you can see they are very close to each other so this part is almost a straight line yes or no so what we have to do is to take a ruler and draw the line the line is actually passing through two points so never ever say it is a tangent it is the line passing through the two closest points so we can draw a straight line here and you can see where it touches the x-axis that is the voltage here is a point is called as threshold voltage so what is threshold voltage it is that voltage required for the diode to conduct minimum voltage required for the diode to conduct is called threshold voltage so we have got it from the graph think of it diode started conducting showing you conduction when your least count is 0.5 milliamps but diode must be conducting much before that and we cannot see on our voltmeter on our emitter and therefore we need to find the threshold voltage from the graph and this is what we are learning from this experiment so in this experiment we have done all three things static dynamic as well as threshold voltage that is the aim of the experiment Okay students, see you next time for another interesting experiment.